Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We're going to begin Local 4 News at 5 with Storm Tracker 4 and the weather. Rain is moving through Metro Detroit right at the height of the evening rush. In fact, rain been pretty active after the day got off to a pretty dreary start. Yeah, let's get over to Andrew tracking when this wet weather is going to move out of here, Andrew. Well, Kimberly and Devin, timing is everything, and the timing is looking pretty good on this one because the rain is slowly but surely coming to an end. Now, not immediately for a lot of folks. Even where it has stopped raining, when this dry slot right here from around Novi to Ypsilanti and down through Monroe County, streets and sidewalks still remain wet. So don't get caught off guard. Even if it stops raining during the uh, afternoon commute, you still want to use those safe driving skills. But here's a look at Storm Tracker 4 and some of the rain that continues to fall persistently throughout the area, including right here in Detroit, southern Oakland County, southern Macomb County as well. From Warren over into Ferndale and also Clawson, these little pockets of yellow right here, that's where the rain's coming down a little bit more heavily. Now, no thunderstorms from this, mainly wet roads. That's the concern as we go through the rest of this evening. Factor on some extra time and watch your speeds. Temperatures in the low 50s. It's been cool all afternoon, and so far, many folks have received near or just over a half inch of rain. Any more rain to come as we go into tonight, tomorrow, or the Tigers home opener? I've got the answer to that in your full weather forecast in minutes. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Our other top story at five. A state representative from Redford has been charged with DUI. Livonia police say back in February, state rep Mary Cavanaugh was swerving on I-96 with two flat tires. And it's actually what happened in the days and weeks that followed raising new concerns. Victor Williams following the story. Uh, Victor, she didn't tell the state House Speaker about any of this. Devin, uh, I guess it's safe to say that the House Speaker was just as surprised as the rest of us when all of this came to light. You can't rep our state if you out here drinking and driving. Constituents like Jay Sean Scott and Damon Brooks are shocked learning of State Representative Mary Cavanaugh's most recent drunken driving allegations. She should just face her consequences just like any of us. Back on February 25th, police say she was behind the wheel of a black Ford Escape when an officer noticed something wasn't right. Officers say she was driving on Merrimum near Industrial Road and then got onto I-96 East where she could be seen swerving across lanes. I just hope that she gets the same type of uh, justice that I would get if it happened to me. We're told she had two flat tires, one of them completely disconnected from the rim. When finally stopped, it said she was not able to produce her driver's license and had no idea of the damage to her vehicle. Her lawyer attorney Todd Russell Perkins spoke on her behalf after today's pretrial. My client takes this very seriously as a, as a public servant. Um, it's important that um, we all be responsible. The representative also just so happens to be a sponsor of House Bill 4220 to expunge OWI convictions. Speaker of the House Jason Wentworth had no idea what happened till now. He sent us the following statement, which reads, until today, nobody ever admitted to what happened, hoping it would go away unnoticed. And unfortunately, that means everyone is still trying to figure it out. Thankfully, the Livonia police were on alert and intervened before anything tragic happened. And Representative Kavanaugh was asked to do a field sobriety test, but the results have been redacted from the report as of now. Victor Williams, Local Full Fact. And Victor, talk a little bit about what happened back in 2015. Well, back in 2015, Kavanaugh was told that she had to do 12 months of probation plus five years, uh, excuse me, five days worth of community service, but those charges were later dismissed. As far as this case, she is due back in court on April the 21st. All right, Victor, let's move now to day three of the deliberations for the four men charged with plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer. And unlike other trials, the jury has been extremely quiet, especially today. Sean Lee is live in Grand Rapids tonight following deliberations that are now set to stretch into their fourth day. Sean, you've spoken to some of the attorneys in the case. What are they saying about this? just spoke to defense attorneys moments ago. They were walking out of the courthouse and confirming to us that the jury has gone home indeed after day three of deliberations now stretching into day four, taking most people watching this trial closely by complete surprise. In fact, we asked our local four legal analyst Neil Rockheim for what kind of signals he's getting from this jury in action. I asked local four legal analyst attorney Neil Rockine what he would be thinking if he was a federal prosecutor as jury deliberations go on and on in the Whitmer kidnapping case. Sweating, be sweating through my shirt and 
because this is one of those cases where after the length of the trial and the theory of the case, it seems in so many ways that the jury would have accepted one version or the other relatively quickly. The longer deliberations go, Rockine says, the thought of a holdout on the jury is a real possibility. Think about three days, Sean. Three days you're in that jury room and you've held out. What possibly could the other eight, nine, 10, 11, what could they possibly say that will whelm you into crossing over and saying guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Back here live in Grand Rapids, the jury will be back at 8.30 tomorrow morning. So will we, following every development. Will we have a verdict tomorrow at 6 o'clock, guys? More from Neil Rockheim about a complicated case here with four defendants. The jury, is it being incredibly meticulous, or is there a divide in that jury room? Back to you. Good questions. Okay, Sean, we appreciate it. In a local 4 News update, Redford police say U.S. Marshals have made an arrest in a deadly hit and run at a gas station. This happened back on February 27th. The Marathon gas station near Plymouth and Telegraph. Police said the 53-year-old clerk was run over by an alleged shoplifter. He died at the hospital and charges now are pending. Today, the state begins reporting coronavirus numbers just once a week. So the number we have today is a five day total. 3,215 new cases being reported across the state. So the average is at 643 cases a day, 70 more COVID deaths being reported over that same five day period. Meanwhile, the FDA's vaccine advisory panel continues to debate the future of boosters in the U.S. They started at 830 this morning and they're still going now. Our Dr. Frank Me George been following those discussions today and has a closer look now at how this could impact all of us, Doc. Yeah, Kim and Devin, you know, so to be clear, there was no vote at today's meeting. Instead, the FDA actually asked its panel of outside experts to weigh in on where we go from here, including when a second booster may be recommended for everyone and whether the booster shots should be updated to match the currently circulating variants. Although we've seen a major decline in the number of COVID-19 cases in the country, the virus continues to circulate and all evidence points to the fact that we'll it will continue to do so and will potentially cause waves of an increased number of cases at points in the future. This is particularly of concern as we head into the coming fall and winter season. With that concern in mind, the panel reviewed data on the effectiveness of boosters and predictions of what the next variant could look like. Scientists said new variants have been sweeping through the population remarkably fast. Omicron took over in just four months. Compare that to the flu. The faster influenza, H3 and 2, takes generally three to five years for a new uh, strain to emerge. While it may seem like a no-brainer to update the vaccines, there's actually some risk of reducing their current protection against hospitalization and death. What we know from influenza is that if we go down into a very strain-specific vaccine, that there is a risk that if a uh, variant emerges from the original part of the um, phylogenetic tree, we might be further away from uh, the breadth of protection that we're getting. Other experts stressed any decision to update the vaccines will need to be made soon to have new boosters ready for fall. If you're not on your way to that clinical trial um, by the beginning of May, I, I think it's going to be very difficult to have collectively across manufacturers enough product to meet that demand. Now, some manufacturers are already working on a vaccine that could protect against two strains of COVID. The thing is, they haven't all picked the same two strains. Now, the panel made it clear that more data and coordination is going to be needed to create a specific timeline for making any changes. You know, Frank, it would be nice if the protection in these vaccines, if we could get it to last longer. Uh, was, there, was there any talk about that today? Well, you know, not so much as today's meeting, but actually the National Institutes of Health launched a clinical trial last week to study both updated boosters and different types of vaccines to see if basically we can get protection that is not only effective, but also longer lasting. Yeah. And we're going to follow those studies closely. It would be helpful. Yeah. All right, Frank. Well, Friday is going to be a big day for Will Smith. The board of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences has moved up its meeting to decide on potential punishments for Smith after he slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars. The date of the meeting had been originally set for April 18th. All right, much more to come on a Wednesday. Check in with Paula Tutman. Paula. 
One barometer for the future success of our area is what students are doing when they leave high school. Coming up in a live report, I'll show you why Michigan mm, not doing so great. All right, Paula, also a brand new set of sanctions aimed directly at the people who perhaps matter most to Vladimir Putin. This time not talking about the oligarchs. That's just ahead. Jason. It's become the land of broken promises. It's the scoundrels that we want to discourage. Now, in order to demolish the old Packard plant. That's an eyesore. What happens if and when the owner ignores that order too? But before we go to break, a quick reminder to check out our new newscast at 7 a.m. streaming on Local 4 Plus. Rhonda, Evrod, the whole crew streaming weekdays on your smart TV or streaming service. Just download Local 4 Plus and tune in at 7 a.m.